September is when we start to see some real transitioning take place. In many bodies of water, when that grass starts to back off, it just signals to the bass it's time for transition, okay? Good, healthy green vegetation produces lots of oxygen. It's a good place to find bass. But when it starts to die off, boom, they start to move. And they also like to key in on bait fish. So you got these two really big elements forcing the bass to kind of maybe not be where they were a month ago. The first baits that I like to use are going to either be a hard or a soft jerk bait. And these two right here, I kind of squish them into one category for a particular reason. That is because the soft jerk bait first of all, of course, is just a tremendous fall lure because we can fish it fast, we can fish it slow, but I keep that hard jerk bait ready as well if I start to see this. So if I'm seeing follows on that soft jerk bait, or if they're not just really hitting it, running with it, they're kind of swatting at it, they're interested, but they aren't committing, that's when I will put the hard jerk bait on because now I'm going to get that reaction bite. So I'm gonna fish it in a lot of those same areas, really rip it, rip it, rip it, and get them to react. So my first choice is the soft jerk bait. If they're not hitting it like I want them to, or they should, then I'm gonna go ahead and put that hard jerk bait on. The next thing that I'm going to do in September is absolutely burn some crankbaits. And I'm gonna start off with really tiny crankbaits. If I can get it to happen, my preference is to be catching them shallow. In September, they can start really pinning bait fish up in these pockets, up against the shoreline, any place where they can just keep that prey species from running away. So if I can fish shallow crankbaits, fast, and I mean really fast, start, stop, start, stop. That is the key. You've got to start and stop it. That's what I'm going to try to do. I will mess around with profile size. I'll go up in body size a little bit or maybe down a little bit. But the real factor, the most important factor is that I can burn it shallow and that is what I'm going to try to do and you can just cover so much water with it and pick off some aggressive fish and find where they're hanging out. Next, if I have wind in September, uh, even some days that are very windy out, I am running to the lake and I'm putting on a spinner bait. This is my absolute go-to for windy days in the fall. And when that wind is blowing hard, okay, it's gonna get those microorganisms pushed whatever direction that wind is going. The bait fish are gonna follow, the predators are gonna be right there behind them. And when this bite is happening, this wind-driven fall bite, I'm not really concerned about the cover and the structure that's around. I am 100% focused on the wind. So it may have them pushed up against the bluff bank, pushed into a pocket, pushed into a, a flat, a tapering shoreline, you know, 45 degree shoreline, whatever, it doesn't matter. My main focus is on that wind and I want to try to find the part of the lake where that wind is hitting most perpendicular to a shoreline and just hang on because a spinner bait is a great tool just to get hammered in those conditions, a definite go-to in September. And the next bait that I'm gonna use that imitates bait fish is going to be some sort of walking lure. Walking lures are one of my favorites in the fall because I can fish them slow, I can speed them up. They're just so versatile. And I'm probably gonna start off with a little bit smaller one. Um, a lot of times the bait fish this time of year, they're really keen on those smaller bait fish. It's like in my home lake here, all of a sudden the minnows just show up out of nowhere, right? And there's shallow minnows all over the place. So I'm gonna use a walking top water that is a little bit closer in profile, but, you know, if that's not working for me, I'll go ahead and quickly jump up to the bigger size as well. But a walking top water in September is a dynamite lure, especially if those bass are schooling. And the last thing that we have to think about is we still need to have some sort of lure that is going to pick apart a very specific spot or a type of cover or structure. Think your jigs, think your Texas rigs. This is especially true in these lakes that have mass amounts of vegetation starts to recede. The bass are going to pull to something hard. That may be something hard in the form of wood. It could be something hard in form of a rock pile, or it could be something hard is like nestling up against docks, dock pilings, seawalls, those types of things. So if you're in a heavy vegetated lake, have that 
that Texas rig or jig ready to go in September as well. And if you're fishing, let's say a Highland Reservoir, maybe you're fishing way up north in the northern part of the country where it seems like it's all rock, right? You know, I'm thinking like boundary waters. In that type of situation, when that vegetation starts to die off, you may be thinking, Steve, it's just hard structure all over the place. Well, then I'm going to focus on what is different. So if I just have a shoreline full of rock, 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 and then I got that lone lay down, that's where I'm going to target because that lay down, that wood is different than those hundreds of yards of just straight rock. And hey, if you would like to watch a video that talks about the lures that I have ready all the time, if those schooling bass show up, go ahead and watch this one right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.